Okay, real talk. Have you heard about this scary thing called oxalate dumping? Like if you stop eating things like this or spinach or chocolate too quick, your body just freaks out and causes all kind of chaos. Fatigue, rashes, mood swings, muscle cramps, painful urination, digestive issues, and more. I mean, it sounds wild, right? Well, today I'm gonna dive into what science really says about oxalates, oxalate dumping, and whether you need to worry about it at all. Buckle up, it's gonna be a wild one. So if you've been online at all lately, you've probably heard influencers, writers, blogs, forums, Facebook groups talking about oxalates and oxalate dumping. People talking about, well, I eliminated everything from my diet and suddenly my body started dumping oxalates. And now I feel terrible. Some of the symptoms supposedly include fatigue, mood swings, skin rashes, muscle cramps, painful urination, digestive issues, and even crystals erupting out of your skin. Please Google calcinosis if that's happened to you because that's an issue for a whole different video. But hold on, is this actually true? Or is it just another internet ghost story? Here's the kicker, oxalate dumping is not backed by science at all. Yep, there is zero scientific evidence to prove this. It's all anecdotal. And if you listen to some of the people that are talking about oxalates, they always tell you not to go for anecdotal studies. Make sure they're backed by science. But this is different. There are absolutely zero studies that talk about oxalate dumping. Let's go beyond that. This book is the Guyton and Hall's textbook of medical physiology. This is the gold standard of physiology books that look into the science of how the body works. How many times does it mention oxalate dumping? Zero. So is that wrong too? So first of all, oxalates themselves are a real thing. They're naturally found in a ton of healthy foods, spinach, beets, almonds, tea, and even chocolate. Yep even chocolate. So what can high oxalate levels really do? They could contribute to kidney stones. That's a fact. That's a real scientifically supported condition called hyperoxaluria. But this is totally different from so-called oxalate dumping. Here's the good news. We have friendly gut bacteria like Oxalobacter formogenes that naturally break down oxalates in our digestive system. But they don't have a secret agenda to suddenly dump oxalates when you change your diet. Let's see what Dr. William Davis had to say about this on my recent interview with him. Well, it's become clear given the science that a high level of oxalates is due to a loss of lactobacillus and bifidobacteria species, perhaps some other species like Oxalobacter. In other words, it's due to dysbiosis and more likely SIBO. So, uh, so I think about this. So your great grandmother could eat all kinds of food. She could eat tomatoes and eggplants and nuts. She had no problems. Modern people say, they say things like, I can't eat 37 foods. There's a list of seven foods I can eat. And if I eat outside that list, I get real sick. That's very, the problem is not the food. It's not the oxalates. It's not the FODMAP. It's not the histamine containing foods. It's none of those things. It's the distortion of the microbes. So for instance, uh, oxalates, all you have to do is restore lactobacillus species, bifidobacteria species, uh, and you'll, the oxalates go down. Likewise, uric acid, likewise, homocysteine, likewise, T-mail. All these boogeymen that have been come up over this, these are all, that's why, but it, it also illustrates just how widespread this problem is disruption of the gastrointestinal microbiome. So the gut friendly bacteria like Oxalobacter formogenes that break down oxalates, they're real, but they're not secretly plotting to dump all the oxalates and ruin your weekend. Trust me, your gut bacteria has better things to do. So with that being said, could going on an elimination diet that kills off a lot of bad bacteria, but also kills off good bacteria be the culprit? Could be. So imagine you're a mean guy and you have a nice dog and you tie it up in your backyard and you leave town for a couple of weeks and you forget to feed it and it's on a chain. What's going to happen to your poor dog? It's going to be dead, right? So if you don't feed creatures, they die, or at least they become very weak and diminish in numbers. And so when you don't feed microbes, bad things happen. So among the things that occurs when you deprive yourself of fibers, you might call it a carnivorous diet, you might call it a ketogenic diet, or an excessively strict ketogenic diet. Not, not all people on these diets do this but many do. So if you deprive yourself of those fibers that nourish microbes, weird stuff happens. One of the things that happens is acromancia over proliferation. So acromancia is a beneficial microbe under normal conditions. If acromancia uh, comprises about 5% of all microbes in your gastrointestinal tract, it's a good situation. Helps you control weight and blood sugar and blood pressure and mood, it's a very beneficial microbe. 
if you feed it fibers. If you deprive it of fibers, it does something very strange. It has the added capacity to consume human mucus. Its full name is Acromancia mucinophila, mucus lover. So it mm. loves human mucus. So when you <laughs> fail to feed it fibers, it turns a human mucus lining your intestines and it causes intestinal inflammation. You can actually get ulcerative colitis from this. Now, if you check with kidney specialists, doctors that have done a lot of research into this, nutritionists and others, you'll never hear a mention of oxalate dumping. And that's because there's no meaningful research to back it up. And please, if you know of a study that I've missed, please leave me a comment down there and let me know because I'm always trying to learn, make myself better so I can help make other people better as well. Some of these experts do talk about managing oxalates over time if they're becoming a problem for about 1% of people, but not panicking and doing sudden dietary changes. So the good news is your spinach and your almond butter are not secretly plotting against you. Oxalates don't just come from the diet. We make them inside. We don't have any enzymes as human beings to be able to clear oxalates. We require um, oxalobacter, um, that bacteria, to be able to help us clear it. Now there are a whole bunch and they're finding way more, as you pointed out, with the, the lactobacillus, that there are a lot of other bacteria that are in there that can also clear um, the oxalates. Now here's a fun twist. Did you know that your body doesn't even absorb most of the oxalates that you consume? Typically only about five to 15% of dietary oxalates are actually absorbed in your gut at all. The rest of it simply passes right through. And when you eat oxalate rich foods alongside calcium rich foods, Absorption can drop to even less than 5%. So in other words, when you eat a salad that has spinach in it, add some cheese on top. Add some of my blue cheese or ranch dressing that I have the recipes for. Those don't just taste great on the salad, it's scientifically proven to lower the oxalate absorption if you're worried about it. As it turns out, oxalates are just tourists passing through your gut. They're not looking to take up residence long term. Now, have you ever wondered what cooking or blanching your foods does to oxalate content? Boiling or blanching oxalate rich veggies like kale or spinach reduces their oxalate content by 30 to 85%. Yes, 85% is possible because they leach into the cooking water. Steaming or sauteing doesn't lower them as much. So boiling or blanching are best if you're concerned with oxalates. And then after you boil it, just get rid of that water and the oxalates go with it. So good news, your grandma's boiled spinach recipe actually had some science backing it up. Now let's say you're still skeptical about this oxalate dumping thing. There should be a real simple question to ask. If oxalates are such a big problem, wouldn't people that eat mostly plants have the highest incidence of kidney stones? Well, actually studies show that the lowest risk for kidney stones are among people that eat more fruits and more veggies. Now I believe even though I support a low carb diet with plenty of good protein from real meat, you need some of the prebiotic fiber that's in a lot of the vegetables to support your gut health. If you're not eating fiber, your gut bacteria has nothing to grow on. Plant foods contain water, they contain fiber, they contain potassium, magnesium, and citrate, all of which significantly reduce formations of stones. Now, elevated uric acid and calcium in your urine have been associated with a higher risk of kidney stones, but that's not found mostly in the plant-based eaters. It's mostly found in very, very high protein and low fiber diets. So spinach lovers, your salad habit is not plotting your demise. So maybe you've had kidney stones. Maybe your doctor has told you to lower your oxalate levels. Here's what to do. As I said earlier, make sure you pair the high oxalate foods with calcium. Add in cheese, yogurt, kefir to your diet. And if you do want to change your diet, do it gradually. Making abrupt diet shifts can be uncomfortable for a lot of reasons, but it ain't oxalate dumping. Gradual changes will help your gut adjust and your body adjust comfortably. Make sure you stay hydrated. Hydration is the number one proven defense against kidney stones. So get plenty of electrolytes and stay hydrated. And if anybody's trying to sell you a magical oxalate detox, that's about as real as a unicorn smoothie, so stay away from that crap. If you do feel kind of weird after dietary changes, especially moving to a low carb diet, things like joint pain, fatigue, digestive issues, that's totally normal and making sure your electrolyte levels are right will help you with that. Your body's gonna detox from anything that it's used to that you're not putting in it anymore. And consult your healthcare provider and let them know what's going on and what changes you made. They should be able to help you out as well. Please see a doctor that actually understands what kind of dietary changes you're trying to make. A lot of them are 20 or 30 years behind the science and the research. If they don't understand it, they're not going to be able to help you. So believing in oxalate dumping is a real thing could scare you away from genuinely healthy foods. It could cause you to miss real medical conditions that need attention. And if you focus on making the gut healthy first, the rest is going to follow. If you go back to pre-agricultural times, you'll find that people ate 
what was available. Obviously meat was probably the top choice, but they had to have plenty of plants as well. And now with processed foods and a lot of other things going on in our society, the healthy gut microbiome is disrupted and it's causing all kinds of problems. So let's just agree there's enough to worry about without imaginary oxalate conspiracies. Can you imagine telling your buddies, nah, I can't go out this Friday night, I'm dumping oxalates. Come on. Oxalate dumping is not recognized medically or scientifically. Any symptoms from dietary changes probably come from detoxification, stress, electrolyte imbalances, or totally unrelated health issues. Your kidneys aren't hiding oxalates like a secret Halloween candy stash. Focus on these proven practical steps. Pair your oxalate rich foods with calcium, drink plenty of water and electrolytes, make slow dietary adjustments, and seek real medical advice if symptoms come up. Let's trust science and common sense, not internet myths. It sells plenty of books, I'm sure, but get down to the root or the gut of the problem first and don't try to blame it on spinach. If plants are getting the best of you, you should want to fix it at the root cause. Your body's not out to get you. It's actually pretty amazing. Stick to what the science shows us. Stay hydrated. Eat meals with plenty of good fiber in it, but also a lot of good protein from animal products. If you enjoyed this video today, please hit like down there, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and share this with somebody that might think that spinach is out to get them. If you've got any questions or heard any other wild diet myths, please leave me a comment down there and let's talk about it. Thanks so much for watching. Stay healthy, keep smiling, and I'm going to go eat me some almond flour. See you on the next video.